so before starting the video i'd love to tell you that i'll be taking a session on career guidance which will be an interactive session on this saturday at 10 pm so you can check out the link in the description and make sure you enroll for it on this session we i'll be sharing you a google meet link where you can join and ask your doubts to me personally so guys let's meet in the session check out the session link in the description hey everyone welcome back to take you forward so today we will be solving the problem burst balloons now what does the problem state the problem state you're given n balloons like over here n is 4 so you're given 4 balloons every balloon has a number written on it like this first balloon has a number 3 written on it the second uh, balloon has a number 1 written on it the third balloon has a number 5 written on it and the fourth balloon has a number 8 written on it okay so you have to burst them now imagine if i'm bursting 5 then the number of coins that you will get will be the left side of it he himself and the right side of it so it is 40 coins is what you will get if you burst out 5 40 coins is what you'll get if you burst out 5 so the question states you have to burst the balloons in any order you wish you can burst 5 then you can burst 8 then you can burst 1 then you can burst 3 or you can go 3 then 5 then 8 then 1 you can follow any order and in following the order you will be getting some coins because every time you burst a balloon you get some coins so the summation of the coins so the summation of those coins should be maximum is the question for an example if i decide that the first coin sorry the first balloon that i'll burst is three then what will be the number of coins that it will be adding the left of three is one the right of three is one and he himself is three so the number of coins added will be 3 okay after bursting this you are left with 1 5 and 8 now imagine i say hey listen can you please burst out one can you please burst one now remember previously one had a 3 on the left but since you have bursted that balloon out for this one there is no one on the left there is no one on the left so since it is no one you take one you take one itself and on the right it is a 5 so you take 5 so the total will be 5 now i decide after this you have 5 comma 8 now i am deciding that hey listen let's burst out 5 so if you're bursting out 5 you'll get 1 on the left 5 himself and 8 on the right 1 on the left 5 itself 8 on the right so i guess this will be 40 right after this you'll be left out with 8 so if you're left out with 8 the left has nothing like if you're bursting 8, he himself and the right has nothing, which is this. So if you summer, if you add this up, I think you will get 56. So the total number of coins that you get if you are bursting out first 3, then 1, then 5, then 8, the total number of coins that you'll get is 56. So the order that we took was very simple. First 3, then 1, then 5, then 8. What if I say, at first, let's try bursting out 1. At first, let's try bursting out 1. So if I try bursting out 1, it will be uh, giving me 3 on the left, 1 himself and 5 on the right, which is a summation of 15. Right after this, we will have 3, 5, 8, right? So after this, what I'll do is I'll try to burst out 5. So if I burst out 5, 5 himself, on the left, we have a 3. On the right, we have a 8. So the summation total will be 120. Right after this, we have a 3, 8. Now, I decide that, hey, listen, I'm going to burst out 3. So, if I'm bursting out 3, 1 on the left, 3 himself, and 8, which gives me 24. Right after this, I have a 8, which means 1 on the left, 8 himself, 1 on the right, which is 8. So, if I summarize this entire stuff, you get 120 plus uh, something like, I think you'll get 167. Yeah, if you summarize this up, you'll get 167 this is the summation of coins that you're getting and the question stated you have to maximize it so 167 is the maximum coins that you can get if you follow the order of at first 1538 like if you follow 1 5 if you're following 1 5 3 8 the maximum coins that you'll get is 167 you can follow various other ways but you will see that 167 is the maximum that you can obtain right so Pretty much that is the question. So how do you solve this question or how do you approach this question? Now if I again write down the example, it was very straightforward. 3, 1, 5, 8. So do you see a pattern to this question? Because 
is this somewhere related to the partition or the MCM question that we did? By the way, if you have not seen the MCM DP and the previous DP 50, I'll recommend you to watch both these because if you're not watching those uh, both uh, couple of videos, you'll not understand this. Okay, so please go back and watch out the MCM video as well as the DP 50 and come back and watch this. Okay, so you have to follow an order, right? Like you can follow three, then one, then five, then eight. You can follow an order like one, then a three, then a five, then an eight. You can follow an order of eight, then a one, then a three, then a five. So can they? So they? So they can always be various set of orders. But you need to understand which will be the first you pick. So apparently this is the entire range of elements, right? Like three, one, five, eight. Any one among them can be the first. Three, one, five, eight. Any one can be the first. Like you can burst out three. You can burst out one. You can burst out five, you can burst out eight, you can burst out any one. Okay, so can I say the range is this, like if I take this is the starting point, this is the ending point. In between them, including three and eight or one or five, any one can be your first element. Makes sense? So I can think it in the direction of MCM because in the MCM, if you remember, there were mattresses like A, B, C, D. Then we decided that we will first take B and C, multiply, then the resultant goes and gets multiplied with these couple of guys. That is what we did. So can I similarly say, if I consider this as an entire stuff, you decide which one is the first element. It can be 3, it can be 1, it can be 5, it can be 8. Then we start thinking of the second element. Then we start thinking of the third element. So we can follow that order. But can we? Can we? So let's understand, can we or can we not by taking a simple example of B1, B2, like I'm just not taking numbers, I'm randomly writing uh, balloons, okay? So it's like balloon 1 has this value, balloon 2 has this value, balloon 3 has this value, balloon 4 has this value and so on. So imagine, imagine, I say you, okay, hey, listen, let's burst this guy out. That is B4. If I'm bursting B4, what is the value that I add up to the answer? Can I say B3 into B4 into B5 is the coins that I'll get like B4 himself, B3 on the left and B5 on the right. Is this the value that we will get? Definitely. So I will be left with this sub portion to solve, right? So I will be left with a sub portion of B2, B3. This is a sub problem. I can call it as a sub problem. This sub problem has to be solved. And I'll also be left off with another sub problem of B5 b6 so apparently can i can i say this can i say this what this this is a value plus this sub problem we solved plus this sub problem we solved can i say this the answer to this is no i cannot i cannot say this like i cannot just burst b4 and then solve this individually and then solve this individually add up this answer add up this answer will that work the answer to this is no why will that not work let's understand so i'll just erase this i hope you got it if i burst before at first what will happen why solving them independently will not work is is the main concept of this problem so why this problem and this problem cannot be solved independently is the main concept of this problem. If you understand that, you are pretty much through. So imagine if you're bursting or B4, it is over, right? And what is the state? Like if you imagine the state, what is the state? The state after this will be B1, B2, B3, B5, B6, right? So imagine, just imagine, if you would have taken this as an individual subset, if you would have taken this as an individual sub problem and you would have bursted out B3, Apparently, right after this, right after B4, if it had decided to burst out B3, who would have been the right guy of B3? B5. So can I say, even if I take this sub problem independently, this B3 depends, like B3 will be taking a dependency of B5, might. Or if I say, after B4, I decide to burst out B5, then also, like if I burst out B5, then right on the parallel, it has a B3 dependency. And it has a B6 dependency. So imagine if you're bursting out B5. After this, you will have B1, B2, B3, B6. So after this, if you decide to burst out B6, this B6 still has a dependency on B3. So you cannot just randomly decide that this is an individual sub problem. 
because for dp to work this has to be an individual sub problem you should not be depending on the values of this understood now you might argue but striver if b6 is getting bursted we we just take the b3 as the left guy no that will not work imagine after bursting b5 imagine after bursting b5 you had b1 b2 b3 and b6 and you decided to burst out b3 so this b3 was dependent not on b5 rather on b6 so depending on who is getting bursted b3 might be dependent on b5 b3 might be dependent on b6 so you cannot individually solve these couple of problems you need to understand you cannot individually solve these problems you absolutely cannot so a key point to notice is if i start from the front if i start from the front like uh, we we basically go across this like if i just take you over here we first had had one then we had five then we had three then we had eight so you cannot go in this direction instead of this i will say why can't i go in the opposite direction we'll start thinking in the opposite direction in the opposite like i will say if there are four elements who was the last guy and the answer that i'll get is 8 and the answer that i'll get is 8 then i'll say who is the second last guy and if this is a sub problem i get this is the second last guy after that i'll say who is the other guy so it says 5 after that i'll ask who is the other guy it'll say this let's realize let's take this example only and understand okay 3158 so 3158 okay i say like Eight is the last guy to be bursted. Okay, so as of now, we had this entire range that has to be solved. That has to be solved. Now, to avoid complications, we know on the right of eight there is no one. We know on the left of three there is no one. So what I'll do is just to avoid complications, I'll add a one, and I'll remove this, and I'll also add a one over on the on the right, and I'll remove this. But this is the these are the numbers that i have to solve just to avoid complications i added a one i added a one on the left and right okay now imagine this is the last guy to be solved and initially this is the range that you are looking for and i am saying instead of now on this range deciding which is the first guy i decide who is the last guy left so if i decide who is the last guy left can i say the cost will be 1 into 8 into 1 if 8 is the last guy just imagine if 8 is the last guy Can I say the cost will be one into eight into one, which is if this is the range, the left of the range, the right of the range, and the number itself. So I've decided eight is the last guy. So this is the coin that will be added. I'm just going in the reverse way. Okay, right before this, if eight is the last guy to be bursted, right before this, if you remember, there was three and eight, or what was it? Let's go back and watch three and eight. Yeah. So three and eight was the guy, and I decided to burst out three. So if three and eight realize if three eight and eight is remaining, that means you have bursted out eight. You have bursted out eight. Now you just have this much range. So I'll just erase out. You're going from the back, so you just have this much range. This has been bursted last. So now I'm saying you have a three that has to be bursted. You have a three that has to be bursted. So can I say for this three, I definitely know since I've bursted out before eight. Eight will be the right guy to it because I'm going in the reverse direction. Just because eight was here, in the next step I was able to burst eight. So I'm very much sure that three has the right guy eight because all the others would have been bursted in these steps. Like one would have been bursted here, five would have been bursted here. So three definitely has the right guy as eight, which is again three itself. This is the range. This is the range. On the left of range is eight. On the right of range is eight. So one into eight. On the left of is one. On the right is eight. Perfect. So you bursted out three. If you burst out three, what are you left with? Can I say this is the range that you're left off with? And in this previous, in this previous, if you go across and you see you are just having three, five, eight, and in this you decide to burst out five. Yes, in this you decide to burst out five. Again, if you are deciding to burst out five, you are definitely sure this is the range, right? And five's right is eight. Five's this guy is three. So you say five on the right is eight, and on this range on the left is three. 
again why does this work because you know this guy will be bursted over here right so anyone who is not in the range would have been bursted in the next counter will be bursted in the next counter so he exists over here he exists over here since you're going in the opposite you definitely know 3 and 8 exists because you're moving in the opposite fashion so 3 and 8 perfect now you go back now when you go back you would have bursted 5 so the remaining range will be just 1 you, the remaining range will be just 1 and in order to burst 1 again you look on the left which is 3 1 itself and on the right which is 5 and you get a 15 you get a 120 you get a 24 you get a 8 you just moved in the opposite direction you just moved in the opposite direction and if you move in the opposite direction the sub problems will be independent like if i just take one more example of b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 and b6 right so if i'm taking this example if i if i just decide that hey listen i am uh, going to burst out for an example b5 if i'm deciding to burst out b5 out of this range then what i'll do is if this is i this is j i know the left guy of this is a of i minus one i know the guy itself imagine this is index is a of index imagine the right guy is j plus one this is the coin that you will get if this guy is bursted right at the end and this is a sub problem that has to be solved this is a sub problem that has to be solved so you will see can you please solve the sub problem from here to here which is i comma index minus one because if this is index this is index minus one and if this is index this is index plus one to j so this are the two sub problems which you can easily solve now are these sub problems independent is my question are these sub problems independent is my question obviously they are independent yes they are independent let me give you a proof are they independent or not but take b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 and b6 okay i've taken this now imagine i'm saying b4 is the last guy to be executed bursted rather so b4 you're definitely sure the answer is 1 into b4 into 1 right right before the step what will be the step this is a sub problem as i said that you have to solve or this is a sub problem that you have to solve right as i know b4 was the last guy to be bursted i definitely know i definitely know b4 will exist over here because only if b4 exists then only in the next step it will get bursted i repeat b4 has to exist in the second last burst and this is the last burst b4 has to exist because if b4 exists in the last burst then only it can get bursted right so this is a problem that you are solving so can i say since this is lying over here and b4 exists b4 will definitely be the guy who is on it yes and can i say probably it can be b1 b4 in the last step probably probably or it can be b2 b4, or b4 in the last, second last step or it can be b3 b4 in the second last step or b4 b5 or b4 b6 it can be either this or this or this or this or this anyone no matter who is no matter who is who it is I am not dependent on these guys. Instead of that, for B5 or for B6, I am just dependent on B4. Who is the guy to the left of it? Who is the guy to the left of it? I am not dependent on this sub-problem. Carefully see, sir. Proved that it is not dependent on the left sub-problem. Even if you are solving for B1, it is dependent on the range right guy. Not on anyone over here. That is the proof. So, I have easily proved to you how this formula comes up again i've given you why just uh, the trick is there that you have to start from the bottom instead of the front instead from the front now you must be thinking but how will we think that we have to think from the bottom again uh, this will come with practice when i did this problem at the first instance it did not strike me i had to go through a lot of blogs forums then i understood that 
they're actually starting from the bottom and then i realize that this is how we need to solve it okay so not an issue if you're not uh, getting the solution right at the go and you have to watch this video okay so b1 b2 b3 b4 b5 now as i said the first thing that you'll do is one and one so these are five balloons definitely n will be five five balloons and if i write down the index it will be zero one two three four five so can i say if n is five the first range that you're looking to solve the first range that you'll be looking to solve will be f of one comma five or this is the range that you're looking to solve this is the sub problem that you're looking to solve right now in this in this range like if b1 b2 b3 b4 is a range and you have added one and one and this is the range can i say if this is i this is j who can be the last guy if you are thinking on the last step this guy can be your last guy this guy can be your last guy this guy can be your last guy or this guy can be your last guy anyone can be your last guy and if anyone can be your last guy can i say then it's very simple to write the recursion yeah it's very simple so since anyone can be the last guy what i'll do is i'll just write the f and i know this will be i and this will be the j so this is the sub problem that i'm solving so if i've been given this i'll try to solve it okay and remember one thing when will you stop even if we are having i and j over here and this is a single sub problem you still solve it you still solve it so if you're taking b2 then j will be moving here so the sub problem will reduce if if there is there is a sub problem you will solve it but if there is no sub problem then you stop like if at any moment i crosses j if at any moment uh, like you're just shrinking you're shrinking like this like this and at any moment you have shrinked it enough so that there is no more sub problem the the least sub problem could be i equal to equal to j where you are solving a single but beyond this beyond this there will be no sub problem and if there is no sub problem the coins that you will get will be zero if there is no sub problems the coins that you will get will be zero now can i say this can be the first guy this can be the last guy rather last guy last guy, anyone so can i actually run a loop something like index will start from i and go till j i can i can so if you remember the cost that we encountered was a of the right of range the number itself whom we are assuming to burst the right guy so if 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 we are bursting this guy index then we are taking i until index minus 1 and index plus 1 till j correct so the two sub problems that we have to solve will be i index minus 1 index plus 1 comma j so can i say this will be the cost for every index if we decide to burst this this will be the cost if we decide to burst this this will be the cost if we will decide to burst this this will be the cost so for every time the for loop runs first time i'll get the cost to burst this next i'll get the cost to burst this next i'll get the cost to burst this next i'll get the cost to burst this so what will i be taking i'll be taking the maximal because that is what the question states so probably i can keep a maximum is equal to an int mini in java it can be integer dot min value okay and what i can do is i can say mini equal to minimum of mini and comma cost is what i can simply do once i've done this the for loop ends and can i return the mini i can definitely return the mini yeah i can definitely return the mini this is how yeah this is how the recursion will be now so what about the time complexity now we know that whenever we are applying recursion it is going to be exponential in complexity that is something we know so what we need to do is if there are overlapping sub problems there will definitely be an overlapping sub problem if you try to draw them to a tree you will see that there are overlapping sub problems and whenever there is an overlapping sub problem we can memoize the solution and we can apply memoization in order to reduce the time complexity now what is the shortcut that i've taught you you go back and see in the recursion what are the changing parameters one is i one is j because they will be just changing so what you do is you say okay let me write down the changing parameters one is i one is j and what is the maximum value of i can i say it starts somewhere from 1 to n so n is the maximum so i can probably take it of a size n plus 1 what is the maximum value of j again it can be from 1 to n 
so again i will take n plus 1 so this is the dp array that it will create okay and for every state ij for every state ij you will just plug in over here dp of ij is equal to mini that is what you will plug in okay and you'll just write one line over here if that state has not been like initially you can assign that with minus 1 and plunge that in over here and return dp of ij this shuttle change will make your time complexity to be now what are the number of states 2 n and n i and j are n and n n square and there is an internal loop that you're running if you carefully see the recursion there's an internal loop for every state that you're running so for every state the total like the total number of states are n cross n for every state you're running in not exactly n but somewhere near about a loop so this can be roughly written as an n cube solution whereas the space complexity will be n square which you are using for the dp array and an auxiliary stack space yes and an auxiliary stack space which will be near about big go of n because if you are bursting out n balloons it will take up a depth of n because every time you select a balloon balloon 1 balloon 2 balloon 3 so the depth will be big go of n so this is what the time complexity and the space complexity will be and the next step i will be coding this uh, recursive solution and then we will try to tabulate it by using our generic formula that i have taught you till now so in the function we are given a vector okay now the first thing that i'll do is i'll just do an a dot size and uh, now i'll return the function for the first range is this and a okay now if you remember well enough what we did was we said we will be inserting uh, one at the front and the back so at the back i've inserted and now i will be just doing an insert of right at the front so if you use insert function done next thing that i'll do is i'll include hash include it's important because okay perfect that's something which you have done now let's try the function int i int j and we can take the vector int okay done now we know that if it crosses we can yes we can return a zero we know mini will be or rather we need maxi so maxi will be int mini it mean rather for i and the i index equal to i goes till j index plus plus perfect what will the cost the cost will be a of i minus 1 into a of index into a of j plus 1 plus f of i comma index minus 1 comma a plus f of index plus 1 comma j comma a right once you have done this you will say maxi equal to minimum or other max equal to maxi comma cost once you've done this what you just need to do is you just need to return maxi and i think you should be good to go so yeah that that is a simple code and if you write this you'll see that you're getting all the correct answer but this is a recursive code which will be exponential in nature so just make sure you have a dynamic programming uh the memorization attached to it so n plus one vector int Again, you can just do n plus 1 comma minus 1 and just make sure you pass the dp over here. You can just copy paste the same dp and you can pass it over variable. Please make sure you pass a dp over here, pass a dp over here and right over here you can write dp of i j equal to this and over here you can say if dp of i j is not equal to minus 1, return of dp of i j. Perfect. Uh, and if you have done this, you can simply go across and run this off. If you run this, you are getting all accepted. And if you submit this, it will be accepted. So definitely, uh, this is still using an auxiliary stack space. Now we will be learning about the tabulation concept, which is super duper easy. Yeah. So if you remember the formula that I have taught you uh, in order to convert, what are the steps? Do you remember the steps that you used to convert? The first thing is uh, write the base case. Okay. The second thing is changing variables. Write the changing variables as nested loop. The third thing is copy the recurrence in the recursion. Don't think much. Just copy the recurrence in the recursion. 
So what is right the base case? What is the base case? If I go back to it, uh, can I say the base case was very straightforward or very simple, which is this i is greater than z, j. So is it a generic one? No, it is not. i is greater than j. So probably I can think of this afterwards because there can be multiple values of i and there can be multiple values of j. So let the let us now if I look at the base case, it is i greater than j. So let us keep this apart because we'll just be needing all the i's which are greater than j. So probably you can think of this afterwards. Uh, and one more thing is it's return zero. So the best way to encounter this is you just declare a dp of n plus one and n plus one and initialize it with zero. So apparently everything will be zero. That base case gets covered. Okay. Now i is the first changing variable j is the first changing variable so if you remember the function call it went from 1 comma n where this was i and this was j correct now what do i always say i always say recursion is a top down approach and i always say that tabulation is a bottom up approach now, it does not mean that you have to move from bottom or something like that that means from the base case to the call so the call was from 1 so it will go till 1, 2, 3, 4, till n. So you do the opposite. You do the opposite for i, which is you move from n to 1. Similarly for j, the call started from n. So in the recursion, it will go from n, n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on till 1. So in the tabulation, you go opposite from 1, 2, 3, till n. So you do the opposite. You just go from 1 to n. And after that, you just copy the recurrence right inside it. And you are pretty much good to go. Okay, so yeah, without that actually, we so let's get back to the code. So this will be zero. I will start from n and I will go until one. Okay, and I minus minus. J will start from one and J will go on till this. J plus plus. Perfect. So this is what you can directly write. Once you have written this, you just have to copy paste this recurrence. If you see, this is the recurrence. So you just take it and paste it. Okay, done. Once you have pasted it, remember one thing for sure. Instead of f, you write dp of i of index minus 1. dp of i of index minus 1. Instead of index plus 1 and j, you write dp of index plus 1 and j. Okay. Now, something that you have to take care of is for this i, for this j. You know, for any of the state, which is this, you don't need to do anything because for any i, which is greater than j, you will not have a range because if i is greater than j then there is no range thereby you can easily say continue this is the same base case that is over here i've written the base case now still still there is a thing that you have to change this return is what you have to change and instead of calling one comma n you say what is the value stored at one comma n it will still give you a runtime error it will still give you a runtime error imagine if at the state where j is equal to equal to n it will search for j plus 1, which will be found because you have made sure by inserting at the back one, that will be taken care. But in dp, whenever you do index plus 1, that means n plus 1 index, but you have just declared till n plus 1. Just make sure this is n plus 2. Just make sure it is n plus 2, so that whenever you try to access index plus 1, it does not get out of bound. Once you have done this, uh, you can try running this, and that should be fine. Yeah, this is fine. If you try to submit this, it will be giving you the correct answer. Again, what will be the time complexity? Two loops, n square, n cube. And the space complexity is just the DP array that you are using. Nothing separate from that. So guys, I hope uh, I was able to explain you this tough problem. So just in case I was able to explain you, please, please, please hit that like button. And if you're new to this channel, please, 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 please do consider subscribing to us. And with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's meet in the next one. Till then, bye-bye. Take care.